I'd like to begin by reading four verses from Romans chapter 10. It begins, Brethren, says Paul, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted to the righteousness of God. For Christ, that is the Messiah, is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. In other words, if a person wants to have a righteous standing before God, it will not come, no matter how zealous they are, it will not come by their own efforts. It will come by receiving God's provision of righteousness in a person, and that person is Christ himself, the Messiah of Israel. Now, it's been some years since I was down in the state of Florida, and I met a beautiful couple there. They were highly accomplished, uh, spoke several languages. In fact, I think his wife taught several languages at the local community college. And as I talked with them, I think the man's name was Michael. It's been quite some years now. But as I spoke with him, he told me his story, that he had been raised in a Jewish home, and his mother lived in the state of Israel. He lived in the U.S. He was in the U.S. Marines. But he had joint Israeli-U.S. citizenship. He decided to visit his mother, and after a lovely visit, he came to the border, and the Israeli authorities said, well, where's your clearance from the Israeli military? And he said, no, I, I'm in the U.S. military. And they said, look, you're an Israeli citizen, and you're of age, and you have to do three years in the Israeli military. Every young Israeli is conscripted into the military. And so they forced him to spend an additional three years serving in the Israeli military. As if that wasn't bad enough, when he returned to the United States, the Marines were waiting for him with leg irons. And they took him to Quantico, where he was going to face a court-martial for being AWOL for the previous three years. He was given the crummiest jobs on the base. As you can imagine, he had a, a dead-end career now, and everyone avoided him except a couple of believers, Christians. And when they were done their work, they would come over and help him with the most pathetic jobs on the base. And they talked to him about his Messiah. Well, this inspired in him a desire to be righteous, and so he decided to go to the Jewish services. But when he found out that the rabbi, as he said, didn't have the decency to learn Hebrew, he quit there, and he decided to go with the Christians, because he said, they live the way I'm supposed to live. And he thought, I'll just plug my ears whenever they talk about Jesus. But he said, they talked about Jesus all the time. I couldn't keep up. And, uh, you know, as he spent time with these fellows, he saw the reality. He saw the spirit of the people of God in these Gentile believers. And he thought, that's how I'm supposed to live. And finally, one evening, he put on his talit, his prayer shawl and his yarmulke, and he went and stood where he normally prayed and he began and said to God, I know how I'm supposed to live. I, I've read your book, and I know how I'm supposed to live, but I can't live like that. But these Gentiles who, who follow Jesus, they live the way I want to live. And they tell me the secret is accepting Jesus as the Messiah and sin-bearer. I know this is the worst thing a Jew can do, and I, I, I apologize, and I hope you'll forgive me for this, he said. But I'm going to have to accept Jesus as my Savior because it's the only way I can see that I can live the way you want me to live. Exactly what Paul is saying here. Not by my own zeal, but by Christ living in me do I have the resources necessary to live a life pleasing to God. And so he did. Well, you know, within a matter of a short time, I think within a week or two, he was called in by the brass, and they said to him, 
We don't know what's happened. We can't find any of your records. You're free to leave. And so he was released from the Marines, and the Christians made contact with him and sent him to a Bible school with the Friends of Israel, spent about a year there. And here he was down fellowshipping with this group of believers in Florida, he and his wife, and he introduced me to an elderly Jewish lady who was a survivor of the Holocaust, just a child during the war. And she was an expert on the Holocaust, and she would go and lecture at universities about the subject. And when she heard the gospel, she immediately received the Lord as her Savior. She said, why didn't someone tell me this before? I trust that we will lay claim, every true believer will lay claim to this longing of the heart of the Apostle Paul to be able to honestly say, my heart's desire and prayer for Israel is that they might be saved.